welcome back to my channel if you don't know me my name is Jill Marie so if you guys haven't checked out the first two episodes of this Outlander Scotland series um, make sure you go check it out because episode one we visited Edinburgh which is the capital of Scotland um, and the second episode is the Outlander filled vlog video which I was very excited as if you have already seen it you already knew how much excitement and love of Outlander that I poured into that video so also I apologize if I if all you heard was squealing and gibberish murmuring stuttering from me um but yeah so episode three we are here in Glasgow oh my gosh um after our Outlander tour me and Erica um quickly made our way to the bus station um train station where we caught a train from edinburgh to glasgow and we had a we wouldn't call it a hotel we'll call it like a bed and breakfast per se just because yeah we'll call it a bed and breakfast so it was called um i can't remember it anymore but it was like a guest house where um, when you go in, it's they have like a cute setup, what they would call a lobby, but it was just like a front desk. Um, and then behind the front desk was the stairs to go to the different rooms. Um, so we checked in, we got there like I think around 7 um, p.m. Um, they let us have a late check-in because we were coming from Edinburgh. And so we got there and it was a little sketchy because when we got to our room, we were told that we were going to have twin beds. One for me, one for Erica. But when we got in, there were three beds. Two twins and one queen size or double size bed. And it was just in this giant room that we were so confused of why it was so big. And it had like a giant window that you can clearly see like the, um, the neighborhood um, or the street and the building across from us because we were, I think we were on the second floor. So, um, you can see everything and we were like, this can kind of look like a place where a murder can be shot in, like a film, a murder horror movie can be filmed in, or an actual murder can happen. We're in our hotel, hotel in Glasgow. It's the most sketchy as thing. There's a third bed. But we only wanted two twins. So like, either someone's going to come in the middle of the night, which I don't want, or we get to stare at this lovely bed. <laughs> Creepy. There's rips on the bed. I don't want to know. <laughs> um, we didn't want to judge it, but me and Erica just got this really weird aura or like feeling when we were sleeping there. Um. We left the TV on because we just we just couldn't sleep in a um, in a like very quiet room because the room was so big that it just felt eerie and like weird to have it like just quiet and um, there wasn't a lot of people staying there. I think we only heard like one other room on our floor that was staying there and it was like a group of guys so they were a bit rowdy but their noise wasn't enough to like keep us calm so we left the tv on but the problem with the tv that it's like it was staticky so here and there it would like um come in and out of audio and so that was creepy and um i remember erica telling me um the morning of that she just had a weird feeling and that she felt like there was like a presence or some sort of ghost or supernatural thing happening um, where she heard like footsteps upstairs um, which I don't, I don't think there was a second I don't think there was an upstairs or there was probably an upstairs but it was just she said it was a weird walking that she heard above us or on the walls and it was just like really strange um, and um, the morning that we were supposed to check out, I wanted to take a nap because I didn't get much sleep that night. Um, so when I was napping, Erica stayed awake the whole time. 
because she's felt very uncomfortable in that room and I couldn't blame her because I agree. Um, it was a really cheap place so we couldn't really like complain that much because we knew how cheap of a place it was. It was like probably um, between both of us was 35 pounds and I'm like 35 pounds wow that's like 60 bucks a night for, for a room. Um, so yeah we were so close to booking a different hotel just because we felt like it wasn't safe or just felt weird being in there but we we stuck through we stuck through and we lived through it um the showers weirdly they spent so much money in the shower rooms um and not enough in the hotel rooms that we were like we could sleep in the shower um weirdly there was no shower or toilet inside our room so we had to like share it as a communal bathroom um which i was fine with but i was like that's it basically felt like a hostel where we were staying in but it wasn't a hostel because it was just me and erica in one room just a shared bathroom with everyone else um and so yeah um other than that we had fun in glasgow um it was the only day that was raining so it was a little bit bummy um having to travel to these different places with like an umbrella and like soaking wet and it was like freezing as well because of the rain and the cold weather and like not to add to the mess but um and if you've seen my edinburgh video um you know that i dislocated my knee while going up to edinburgh castle and so that wasn't a fun time um trying to travel around glasgow with a dislocated knee but we stuck through and Jelka made it. We had fun. University of Glasgow was absolutely beautiful. Um, and the tour, the double decker tour bus was a lot of fun um, going to the different spots. Unfortunately, it was Memorial Day, um, Memorial Day Monday. So there wasn't a lot of places open, which we didn't put into consideration when we, um, when we planned to go to Scotland. So that was on our part, but overall we had fun. Um, so yeah, so make sure to stay tuned to this video and just keep on watching. Since it was our last day in Scotland, we obviously had to have a Scottish breakfast and it was delicious. Afterwards, Eric and I packed our bags and got an Uber to visit the University of Glasgow. Because when in Glasgow, you obviously have to visit one of the world's oldest university, which dates back to its founding date in 1451. Wow, that's a little over 500 years ago. Can you imagine the history engraved in these walls? Now, if you haven't seen Outlander yet, prepare yourself for some season 3 spoilers because I'll be talking about Outlander filming locations at the University of Glasgow. Now, in season 2, University of Glasgow was used as a double for Harvard University where Frank took up a position as a professor. And then it appeared again in season 3, and for those who are caught up, we'll remember that after Frank's death, we saw Brie, Claire, and Roger in two separate occasions standing under these exact cloisters during Frank's memorial. If you ever get a chance to visit the University of Glasgow, you can see how beautiful the architectural design for the University of Glasgow was so well done and just very mesmerizing. After visiting the University of Glasgow, not seen in this video, Erica and I actually visit a pharmacy to find a doctor who can actually pop my knee back in place. After the Edinburgh Castle incident, my knee was never the same, but unfortunately we never found a doctor who can do that for me. So I just pulled through and I was like, this is my last day in Scotland, I'm not gonna miss a thing. From the pharmacy, we just walked down to go visit the famous Glasgow Cathedral in honor of Memorial Day and paying our tribute and our respects to the fallen soldiers. For lunch, we visited this local Italian restaurant owned by this sweet couple. It was very budget friendly where I got a classic carbonara and then shared a mushroom risotto with Erica while she had bruschetta bites. As a last minute plan where we could see Glasgow in 4 hours in an efficient manner, we decided to buy tickets for the city sightseeing hop on hop off double decker bus. We visited the People's Palace, which was unfortunately closed because we didn't put into consideration that it was Memorial Day. 
Then we visited the distillery, Glasgow Science Center, Riverside Museum, the beautiful Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. And when I say visited, I mean we just drove by on a tour bus and I really wish I got to see the art museum. But maybe it's a good idea that I got to save it for my next visit so I can take my time walking around. I highly, highly recommend City Sightseeing as they are a really great company for hop on, hop off bus tours. And depending on what city you're in, um, Glasgow included pre recorded audio clips, which helped us envision the history of so many historical sites in Glasgow. This is the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum that I was talking about earlier. And apparently, a lot of museums and art galleries in Scotland are free. Comment down below if I'm wrong or if it's true. The last place we visited was a highly recommended tourist spot that we read on Google, which was the lighthouse located in the Prince Square shopping center. It's not really a lighthouse, but it's actually Scotland's center for design and architecture. It was an interesting place to visit where they had a lot of interesting miniature models on display. Um, the lighthouse definitely highlights the intricate and historically beautiful architecture and design that comes from Glasgow history and culture. At the back of the main exhibit, there's a spiral staircase that is supposed to mimic an actual lighthouse staircase, except this one you can't actually climb. I took a picture of this very interesting washroom sign inside a lighthouse that didn't really make sense, but I think they were trying to capture the value of all gendered washrooms by using non-traditional symbols, which I really like their approach. Comment down below what you think these symbols mean. Before we left to go back to the airport, Eric and I got a quick bite at this amazing pub right beside the lighthouse. I had the best sweet potato fries and this very amazing chicken burger. So freaking good. I'm sad that I didn't remember the name of the place, but it was located beside the lighthouse on the left just before you're back on the main shopping strip. The whole bus ride back to the airport was so sad, so bittersweet because the whole time I was just thinking about how much I absolutely love Scotland, Edinburgh, Glasgow. We definitely needed more time to explore and actually appreciate Glasgow for everything it is. But the double decker bus was a nice way to see most of the city in such a short time. And I'm forever grateful for the experience and would love to visit again maybe a week or two or even a month. And just like that, we were back in Birmingham. And that's it for this series, this Outlander Scotland filled three part series. Oh my god, I'm so sad that Scotland is over. Scotland was, what, three months ago? And I just can't believe that I was able to go to Scotland because it's been a dream, a two year dream since I started watching Outlander. And we just had so much fun. So thank you for staying tuned and hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I plan on continuing this UK, this giant UK vlog series with, um, I still have Nottingham to go, Paris still to go, London, and a little bit of Birmingham still. So make sure to stay tuned because a lot of fun stuff are coming up. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I try to make videos as much as I can and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed our Glasgow filled vlog. See you guys next time. Bye!